Thanksgiving is right around the corner and from one amateur home chef to another, we've got a lot of work to do, starting with potatoes. Potatoes are a staple dish in the Thanksgiving buffet and can be prepared in so many different ways. Today, I'm testing out air fried potatoes, mashed potatoes, loaded smashed potatoes, deep fried potatoes, crock pot potatoes, even vegan potatoes. Let's get started. Crock pots are probably one of the easiest and most effective methods to making mashed potatoes. We're gonna start by greasing the inside of our slow cooker and adding in all of the crucial mashed potato elements. Potatoes, butter, garlic, water, and a little bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna give that whole thing a stir and we're gonna leave it on high for about three hours. While those crock pot mashed potatoes are underway, let's use this time to try out some other delicious Thanksgiving mashed potato recipes. So maybe you don't have three hours, but you still wanna make something unique to impress your family this year. Now we're gonna try three mashed potato recipes that start off standard, but evolve into something so different. It'll have your family thinking you've been taking cooking classes or watching Cassie on TikTok and YouTube. We're gonna start by peeling and boiling some russet potatoes and we've got about 12 minutes before we need to revisit those, which is the perfect amount of time to start working on the mix-in. For the first of three, we're going to be making brown butter mashed potatoes. Super simple. We're just gonna take four tablespoons of cubed butter and plop them into a small frying pan over low heat. Low heat is super important here. We don't wanna burn the butter. I have been caught one too many times turning up the heat to save a little bit of time, but trust me, all that ends up getting you is a smoky kitchen and a bitter taste in your mouth. So we're gonna leave that on low for about eight to 10 minutes, stirring every now and then to make sure that the butter doesn't burn. I might be a little ambitious here, but I'm going to try to multitask. So if you're bold like me, you might do the same thing with your Thanksgiving dinner and work on some other stuff, but don't forget about the butter you will regret it. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous than brown butter mashed potatoes, here's a unique one, beer cheese mashed potatoes. Now I know you're probably like, what in tarnation is that? And to be honest with you, I really don't know, but we're gonna find out. In a medium saucepan over medium heat, you're going to melt two tablespoons of butter, which reminds me, check on the browning butter, give it a stir, back to the beer cheese. You're gonna whip in two tablespoons of AP flour, kind of like nacho cheese. Actually, that makes sense. Interesting. Then you're going to add in two thirds cup of milk and two thirds cup of your choice of beer. And if you're young, you might need some adult help on this one, but don't worry, these potatoes won't make you drunk. They'll just make you tipsy. I'm just kidding. The cooking process will get rid of the alcohol, leaving you with a nice balanced flavor. Now this you need to stir constantly until the mixture is thickened about three minutes. Check on the browning butter. How's it looking? Give it a stir, back to the beer cheese. It's a lot to focus on at once, but my mom always says, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. Good thing I got my AC on full blast. So your beer mixture is finally thickened. You're gonna remove all that from the heat and you're gonna add in a cup of shredded white cheddar and a half cup of shredded yellow cheddar, mixing until fully melted. You're gonna add in some garlic powder, some paprika, some salt and pepper, and finally, all you'll need is the potatoes and your dish is complete. Checking in on that browning butter. How's it looking? If you think that it's done, just take it off the heat. There's a very small window of time between browned butter and burned butter. And honestly, it's better to undershoot than overshoot. If it's been 12 minutes, you can go ahead and remove a third of your boiling potatoes. You should be able to pierce them with a fork. You can leave the other potatoes in the pot boiling for another five minutes. But while these ones are hot, you're gonna mash them. now. You can use a regular standard potato masher, you can use a potato ricer, or even a hand mixer. But honestly, my favorite is the immersion blender. This thing gets your potatoes so smooth and creamy without any additives at all. It's like a high powered handheld blender. It's so cool. My mom always says, work harder, not smarter. It's the other way around. Before we mash, we're gonna add in three quarter cups of milk and a teaspoon of salt. Mash to your desired consistency, then add in half of your browned butter. Put it in a serving dish, top it with the remaining browned butter, sprinkle on some scallions, and boom! Let's take a bite. 20 minute delicious mashed potatoes, well deserving of the Cassie dance. Moving right along, the remaining two thirds of your potatoes are just about ready to be mashed. You're gonna take half, Mash them to your desired consistency and then add in your beer cheese sauce. Mix that until fully incorporated and then we're gonna fold in some sour cream, some chives and season it with some salt and pepper. Gonna add it to a dish, top it with some more chives and boom, super easy and delicious, Cassie Dance approved. 
For the third of our three easy mashed potato series, we're headed in a slightly healthier direction with vegan mashed potatoes. Dairy allergies in the vegan diet are super common. If you're cooking dinner for a large group of people, it's helpful to be inclusive to everyone. And to be honest with you, it's super easy to support a vegan Thanksgiving if you're making the mashed potatoes. If you're on turkey duty, pff, different story. So we're gonna mash the potatoes to the perfect consistency and in a small saucepan over medium heat, we're gonna combine a third cup of extra virgin olive oil, two sprigs of rosemary and a little bit of garlic and we're gonna cook until fragrant, about one minute. We're gonna remove the rosemary from the pot and we're going to pour that into our potatoes and mix until combined. We're gonna add in six tablespoons of vegan butter. I don't know what it is, Sometimes it's better just not to ask questions. And we're gonna mix until the vegan definition of creamy, I guess. I'm gonna put that in a dish, season with some salt and pepper. Now let's taste it. It's surprisingly delicious. Maybe leave the word vegan out when you're describing it to your non-vegan guests. They probably won't be able to tell. Maybe you've done the mashed potato thing every single year and these unique mashed potato recipes just aren't cutting it. You wanna feature your Thanksgiving potatoes in a new and exciting way. Let's try three easy and unique potato recipes that aren't mashed, but might just get you elected as the family potato chef for the next several Thanksgivings. Loaded, smashed potatoes. Easy peasy, we're gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And instead of using boring standard russet potatoes, we are going to be using baby gold potatoes. Look at how cute. I'm gonna leave the skin on for these, just toss them in a pot, cover them with about two inches of water and bring it to a boil. We're gonna let that boil for about 15 minutes. And while we're waiting for those baby potatoes to tenderize, we're going to bring out the all too famous air fryer and we're gonna make some crispy potatoes. In a large bowl, we're gonna toss our baby potatoes with a tablespoon of olive oil, some garlic powder, some Italian seasoning, Cajun seasoning, and some salt and pepper. Toss those in the air fryer at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, shaking halfway in between. Okay, so maybe you have a favorite mashed potato recipe, but you wanna present it in a new new and fantastic way. Or maybe it's the day after Thanksgiving and you're up to your elbows in leftover mashed potatoes with no idea what to do with them. Grab the vegetable oil out because we are going to be making fried mashed potato balls. You'll probably wanna start heating up your oil right about now. That can take a while, but you don't wanna burn it by putting it on high heat. If you have a cast iron skillet, use it. That'll help maintain the temperature of the oil when you add in your cold mashed potato balls. You want the temperature of the oil to be at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, so it might be helpful to break out your handy dandy candy thermometer and keep an eye out for the temperature. While that oil is heating up, let's check back in on those boiling baby potatoes. Yes, a colander. A coleander? I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna switch those over to a lined baking sheet. And we're gonna pour over a quarter cup of melted butter, two cloves of minced garlic, and season it with some salt and pepper. Be careful not to over salt here. That is one way to get you banned from Thanksgiving dinner forever. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, in all seriousness, it is helpful to let people salt to their own taste preferences, especially in a situation like this where you're not tasting as you go, it's just easier. So, we're gonna grab a glass and we're gonna smash down those potatoes. It feels so good. Some potatoes wouldn't smash properly because they weren't tender enough, and um, as the rule goes, if you can't smash, you pass, so but the majority of them were perfect. So we put them in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. How are those air fryer potatoes doing? If you haven't already, give them a shake. It's been probably over 10 minutes by now. Are they golden crispy? Perfect. We're gonna pull those out, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on, and if you have some or you want to, you can add a little bit of parsley as well. Overwhelmed yet? How's that oil doing? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Go ahead and adjust that temperature and we are going to get into the final potato recipe of the night, fried potato balls. Delicious. Go ahead and grab those mashed potatoes from the fridge. Take about three cups of them and combine them with some chives, some cheddar cheese, some chopped cooked bacon, mix it all together. Take a cookie scoop, scoop it into your hand, form a ball. Then we're gonna dredge it in some eggs and completely cover it with panko breadcrumbs. Lightly, because the oil is hot, place it in the frying pan. When it's golden brown and crispy, you will smell it. Take a bite and marvel in your good work. 
amazing, absolutely deserving of the Cassie dance. Hey y'all, it's Cassie from the future here, realizing I forgot one massively important detail, the rest of the loaded smashed potatoes. It's really simple, don't turn the oven off just yet. You're gonna sprinkle on some cheddar cheese and then stick it back in the oven for another five minutes just to melt the cheese. And then you're gonna top it like you would a regular baked potato. Some sour cream, some chives, some extra salt and pepper, and bam, you've got delicious loaded smashed potatoes, well deserving of the Cassie Dan. Finally, the hour has come. Do you remember those slow cooker crock pot mashed potatoes? They're so low maintenance, they're easy to forget. You're gonna put in about a third cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of milk, and season it with some salt and pepper and mash it to your desired consistency. And wow, those slow cooker mashed potatoes are so delish and well-deserving of the Cassie dance. So you see with the crock pot method that takes longer, you can kind of leave it and go do some other work around the kitchen. These other potato recipes require pretty much your full attention. So it might take a little less time to get that side dish up and running, but in total, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make sure everything is hot and steamy at the right time. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching my Thanksgiving prep series. I hope these recipes gave you some inspiration for this year's Thanksgiving potato recipe. Remember that all the recipes that I use today can be found at the links in the description box down below. Thanks to delish.com for the Thanksgiving tips. Make sure to tune in to some of my upcoming videos if you want to become a pro at any other Thanksgiving recipes. And if you can, leave a comment letting me know which of these Thanksgiving potato recipes you are most excited to try. For me, my favorite was the fried mashed potato balls. Oh, delicious! And with that being said, I have a lot of potatoes to eat. See you soon.